Welcome to Mrs. Pam Reads. We are continuing in our book, The Help, by Catherine, oh, the jacket slipping, <laughs> by Catherine Stockett. And we will finish chapter 22 in this video. It is from Abilene's perspective. And we just found out that there are 32 toilets sitting on Miss Hilly's front yard. <laughs> so let's see how that's gonna go. <laughs> we get a little closer and now I see they ain't just all over the yard. They's two in the driveway side by side like they a couple. They's one up on the front step. It like it's waiting for Miss Hilly to answer the door. Ain't that one funny with the, but baby girl done broke off from my hand. She, uh-oh, <laughs> she running in the yard and get to the pink pot in the middle and pull up the lid. Before I know it, she done pulled down her panties and tinkled in it. And I'm chasing after her with a half a dozen horns honking and a man, oh, in a hat taking pictures. Miss Leifolt's car's in the drive behind Miss Hilly's, but they ain't in sight. They must be inside yelling about what they gonna do with this mess. Curtains is drawn and I don't, don't see no stirring. Sorry, bug. <laughs> I cross my fingers, hope they didn't catch baby girl making potty. For half a Jackson to see, it's time to go on back. The whole way home, baby girl is asking questions about them pots. Why they there? Where they come from? Can she go see Heather and play with them toilets some more? When I get back to Miss Leifold's, the phone rings off the hook the rest of the morning. I don't answer it. I'm waiting for it to stop long enough so I can call Minnie. But when Miss Leifold slams into the kitchen, she get to yapping on the phone a million miles an hour. Don't take me long to get the story pieced together, listening to her. Miss Skeeter done printed Hilly's toilet announcement in the newsletter, all right. The, the list of them reasons why white folk and colored folk can't be sharing a seat. And then below that, she follow with the alert about the coat drive too, or at least that's what she was supposed to do. Instead of coats though, it say something like drop off your old toilets at 228 Myrtle Street. We'll be out of town, but leave them in the front by the door. She just get one word mixed up. That's all. I expect that's what she gonna say anyway. Too bad for Miss Hilly. There wasn't no other news going on. Nothing on Vietnam or the draft. Ain't nothing new on the big march coming up on Washington with the Reverend King. Next day, Miss Hilly's house with all them pots makes the front page of the Jackson Journal. I gotta say, it's a funny looking sight. I just wish it was in color so you could compare all them shades of pink and blue and white. Desegregation of the toilet bowls is what they should call it. <laughs> the headline says, come on by, have a seat. They ain't no article to go with it. Just the picture and a little caption saying, the home of Hilly and William Holbrook of Jackson, Mississippi was a sight to see this morning. And I don't mean nothing going on just in Jackson. I mean nothing in the entire United States. Lottie Freeman, who work at the governor's mansion where they get all the big papers told me she saw it in the living section of the New York Times. And if every one of them read it, home of Hilly and 
William Holbrook, Jackson, Mississippi. At Miss Leifold's, there's lots of extra talking on the telephone that week. Lot of head nodding like Miss Leifold getting an earful from Miss Hilly. Part of me want to laugh about them pots. Other part want to cry. It was an awful big risk for Miss Skeeter to take, turning Miss Hilly against her. She coming home tonight from Natchez, and I hope she call. I reckon now I know why she went. On Thursday morning, I still ain't heard from Skeeter. I set up my ironing in the living room. Miss Leifel come home with Miss Hilly, and they sat at the dining room table. I ain't seen Miss Hilly over here since before the pots. I reckon she ain't leaving the house so much. I turn the TV set low, keep my ear turned up. Here it is. Here's what I told you about. Miss Hilly got a little booklet opened up. She running her finger along the lines, Miss Leifold shaking her head. You know what this means, don't you? She wants to change these laws. Why else would she be carrying them around? I can't believe this, say Miss Leifold. I can't prove she put those pots in my yard, but this, she holds up the book and taps it. This is solid proof she's up to something. And I intend to tell Stuart Whitworth, too. <laughs> but they're not steady anymore. Well, he still needs to know in case he has any inclination of patching things up for her for the sake of Senator Whitworth's career. But maybe it really was a mistake, the newsletter. Maybe she, Elizabeth, Hilly crosses her arms not talking about pots, I'm talking about the laws of this great state. Now I want you to ask yourself, do you want May Mobley sitting next to a colored boy in English class? Miss Hilly glanced back at me doing my ironing. She lowered her voice, but Miss Hilly never knew how to whisper good. Do you want Nigra people living right here in this neighborhood, touching your bottom when they pass the street, touching your bottom. I look up and see it's starting to sink in on Miss Leifold. She straightened up all prim and proper. William had a fit when he saw what she did to our house and I can't soil my name hanging around her anymore not with the election coming up. I've already asked Jeannie Caldwell to take Skeeter's place in Bridge Club. You kicked her out of the Bridge Club? I sure did. And I thought about kicking her out of the league too. Can you even do that? Of course I can, but I've decided I want her to sit in that room and see what a fool she's made of herself. Miss Hilly nods. She needs to learn that she can't carry on this way. I mean, around us, it's one thing, but around some other people, she's going to get in big trouble. It's true. There are some racists in this town, Miss Leifold say. Miss Hilly nod her head. Oh, they're out there. After a while, they get up and drive off together. I am glad I don't have to see they faces for a while. At noontime, Mr. Leifold come home for lunch, which is rare. He sat down at the little breakfast table. Abilene, make me up some lunch, would you please? He lift the newspaper, pop the spine to get it straight. I'll have some roast beef. Yes, sir. I set down a placemat and a napkin and some silverware for him. He tall and real thin, won't be too long for he all bald, got a black ring round his head and nothing on top. You staying on to help Elizabeth with the new baby, he asks, reading his paper. Generally, he don't ever pay me no mind. Yes, sir, I say, because I hear you like to move around a lot. Yes, sir, I say. It's true. 
Most maids stay with the same family all their lives, but not me. I got my own reasons for moving on when they about eight, nine years old. Took me a few jobs to learn that. I work best with the babies. So you don't really consider yourself a maid? You're more of a nurse type for the children? He puts his paper down, looks at me. You're a specialist, like me. I don't say nothing, just nod a little. See, I only do taxes for businesses, not every individual that's filing a tax return. I'm getting nervous. This is the most he ever talked to me, and I've been here three years. Must be hard finding a new job every time the kids get old enough for school. Something always comes along. He don't say nothing to that, so I go ahead and get the roast out. Got to keep up good references moving around to different clientele like you do. Yes, sir. I hear you know Skeeter Phelan, old friend of Elizabeth's. I keep my head down real slow. I get to slicing, slicing, slicing the meat off that loin. My heart's pumping triple speed now. She asked me for cleaning tips sometimes for the article. That right, Mr. Lee Foltz say. Yes, sir. She just asked me for tips. I don't want you talking to that woman anymore. Not for cleaning tips, not to say hello. You hear? Yes, sir. I hear you two talking and you'll be in a heap of trouble. You understand? Yes, sir, I whisper, wondering what this man know. Mr. Leifold, pick up his newspaper again. I'll have that meat in a sandwich, put a little mayonnaise on it, and not too toasted. I don't want it dry now. That night, me and Minnie's sitting at my kitchen table. My hands started shaking this afternoon and ain't quit since. That ugly white fool, Minnie said. Say, not says. Say, Minnie say. I just wish I knew what he thinking. There's a knock on the back door and Minnie and me both look at each other. Only one person knock on my door like that. Everybody else just come on in. I open it and there Miss Skeeter. Minnie here, I whisper because it's always safer to know when you go walk in a room with me. <laughs> I'm glad she here. I got so much to tell her, I don't even know where to start. But I'm surprised to see Miss Skeeter got something close to a smile on her face. I guess she ain't talked to Miss Hilly yet. Hello, Minnie, she say when she step inside. Minnie look over at the window. Hello, Miss Skeeter. Before I can get a word in, Miss Skeeter sat down and start right in. I had some ideas while I was away. Abilene, I think we should lead with your chapter first. She pulls some papers out of that tacky red satchel. And then Luvenia's. We'll switch with Bay Bell's story since we don't want three dramatic stories in a row. The middle we'll sort out later, but Minnie, I think your section should definitely come last. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, there fell my shame. <laughs> okay, mini section is coming last. Uh, I think your just section should come last. I lost my spot. There it is. Miss Skeeter, I got something to tell you, I say. Minnie and me look at each other. I'm going to go on, Minnie say, frowning like her chair gotten too hard to sit in. She head for the door, but on her way out, she give Miss Skeeter a touch on the shoulder real quick. Keep her eyes straight like she ain't done it. Then she gone. You've been out of town a while, Miss Skeeter. I rub the back of my neck. Well, hey, we got some kinds of things going on during this video. This is Cora. <laughs> no, I'm reading, sweetie. Then I tell her that Miss Hilly pulled that booklet out and showed it to Miss Leifold. 
and law knows who else. She passing it around town to now. Miss Skeeter nods, say, I can handle Hilly. This doesn't implicate you or the other maids or the book at all. Hello. And then I tell her what Mr. Leapold say, how he real clear that I ain't to talk to her no more about the cleaning article. I don't want to tell her these things, but she gone hear them and I want her to hear them from me first. She listen careful, ask a few questions. When I'm done, she say, he's full of hot air, Raleigh. I'll have to be extra careful though when I go over to Elizabeth. I won't come in the kitchen anymore. And I can tell this ain't really hitting her what's happening. Come on. The trouble she in with her friends. How scared we need to be. I tell her what Miss Hilly say about letting her suffer through the league. I tell her she been kicked out of the bridge club. I tell her that Miss Hilly gone tell Mr. Stewart all about it, just in case he get any indication to mend things with her. Skeeter look away from me, try to smile. I don't care about any of that old stuff anyway. She kind of laugh and it hurts my heart because everybody care, black, white, deep down, we all do. I just, I rather he you hear it from me than in town, I say, so you know what's coming, so you can be real careful. She bite her lip, nod. Thank you, Abilene. And that is the end of chapter 22. If I can, oh, yep, mm-hmm. I don't know. She's getting a little feisty these days. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me for Mrs. PM Reads. Yeah. Okay. Cora says hi. Remember, if you haven't, to go ahead and please subscribe to the channel so you'll get an update when a new story posts. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you <laughs> next time. Bye, you guys.